The next element of great logo design is multifunctionality. Throughout the course of its life, your logo is going to appear on many items. It's going to appear on shirts, hats, more shirts, album covers, more shirts, lithographs, and all sorts of other merchandise. Let's take a look at a couple of the different uses right now. The three things that I want to talk about regarding multifunctionality are versatility, scalability, and color independence. Now let's start with that last one, color independence. When you have your logo, similar to the how to promote your band logo that I have up here, you want to be able to show it in any color that you'd like. If the piece that you're working on calls for red, you want to be able to put some part of your logo in red. Even if it's not the whole thing, you want to have some aspect of your logo that's color independent, that your fans recognize no matter what color it is. Let's say that your first album is a heavy, aggressive type album, where you're actually going to smash some guitars, like in this particular logo. So we know from color theory that red is an extremely aggressive, violent color. So let's color the whole thing red. As you can see, the only thing that's changed is the overall mood. Now there's kind of a sense of urgency here, and you know that this guy's really angry. A better way to get across the aggressiveness of this album might be to just color a little part of it. So here I'm going to copy the layer style, and then I'm going to paste it. Shut the layer style off here. And here, you can see that we only have a couple of words. We've selectively colored this red because that is what we want to focus on as being the aggressive part. We want to bring attention to the fact that this is the aggressive album. So when people see this on a shelf, they know that this is the aggressive one, whereas maybe if we had something in blue, that would be a little more introspective, a little more melodic, and you can see immediately now it's a little more soothing. Let's take a couple examples real quick of the color independence thing. My first example here is an album cover that's entirely done in black and white. In this particular album, keeping the logo black fits with the overall mood and theme. We've got our guitar smashing man in black in the How to Promote Your Band logo. Solid black standing above the real man in black here. And the focus of this original album cover remains on the figure in the center of the cover itself. Here we have another famous album cover with the How to Promote Your Band logo, replacing the original one. Here, as you can see, we've changed the color of the logo so that it stands out from the background. If we were to keep it in the original black, it wouldn't show up at all. Here's one where we've turned the entire band logo purple, and essentially, and essentially that's been done partially to create balance, and partially to maintain the flow of this particular album cover. Now the balance comes in, we have a little bit of purple here down on the bottom, and to balance that out, we bring it back up here at the top, and it continues to flow with the theme of this album cover, but at the same time we're bringing attention to the logo, which would be the band name and the album name in this case, and even our two figures are looking up at the logo to see what the heck's going on there. Let's talk about scalability. Right in line with scalability comes showing only part of your band logo. So in this album cover here, you can see that there's only a tiny piece of the logo visible on the album cover. Yet, you still know exactly what's going on there, especially if you're a fan of this band. And ultimately, uh, this particular album cover is the fourth release from this band, the fourth major release anyway. So they have their fan base solidified at this point. Their fans know that this is their album. In addition to that, this overall grungy abstract style fits in with most of the band's artwork. So if you're a fan, like I said, you're going to have no problem picking this out from the crowd. In a slightly different example, let's talk about moving around the elements of your logo. Here, you can see I've taken the name and split it up a little bit up in the top right hand corner. And the actual icon from the logo, if we zoom in here, is in the top of this skull here. It's a little bit of a highlight right in the forehead of the skull. The moral of this story is, don't be afraid to use your logo in new and interesting ways. Now, don't go hiding your logo in the background here where nobody's ever gonna see it way, way in the back, because that defeats the purpose of having something recognizable. But feel free to do something like this here, where you've broken up the name and put the icon somewhere else, especially if the album is a concept album like this one is, and you have some specific artwork pertaining to the album, and you want to fit your band logo in with that style. All right, so I'm just going to take a look at a couple more here and in terms of versatility. Let's take a look at a uh, poster for a tour. Here you go, as you can see, we have the uh, How to Promote Your Band 360 Degree Tour, and 
just slam the artwork right up in the top there. That's the first thing that everybody sees, and they know that that's the band that they want to see. And then here, right below that, are the extremely recognizable band members. We talked about shirts over and over and over. <laughs> Here's an example of a shirt. This one is from a famous German industrial band called How to Promote Your Band. But you can see it's very simple. And again, we talk about scalability. This is going to go across the entire chest of whoever's wearing this. We talk about uh, versatility. We've thrown this on a shirt. It's very easily recognizable. And we talk about color independence. As you can see, the whole band logo here is white. And we've got a little bit of spot color red off to the side in those stripes. Another great thing to note here, and this was completely accidental, but every aspect of this shirt points to the band name and the album name. In this case, how to promote your band would be where your band name and album name are. And these red stripes aim your attention directly at it. Even if you start from the left, your eye instantly follows the motion of the man smashing the guitar, and then these red lines bring it right back up through the band name. Again, good design. We're directing the eye exactly where we want it. Another great thing that a lot of bands do, which when you get to this size and you can actually afford it, they throw their band logo right up on stage with them. Either before they come out, they put it up there to get their fans kind of excited, or just before the fake encore-y kind of thing where they come out seven more times, or right at the end. They finish their entire set, throw their band logo up there at the end, and let all the audience members walk out while the band logo is up. So that that's the last thing that people have in their minds when they walk out that night, and that's the, uh, and that's the image that'll stick in there. One last one I have here for you, and then we're gonna move on. You never know how big your band is gonna get, and maybe someday your band will have its own Xbox 360 game. So keep that in mind, that's all for now. Please remember to... Hey everyone, one quick note before you go. This video that you just watched is part of a larger course on how to promote your band. So if you like what you saw, or if you're just ready for the next step, then click the link right here in the description, and that will take you to the course page overview where you'll see every lesson in the series, and you can pick and choose which ones you want to watch. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and if you have any questions, send them to requestsitmahalo.com. Thanks for watching. The second thing that goes into great logo design is multiple functionality. Multifunctionality, multiple processes. There's ham and eggs that you can use on a ham sandwich, but then you can also cook ham by itself for Easter dinner.